I'd like to call the meeting to order at 6 30. about uh we have some additions to the agenda it looks like you've got one gina no 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 none. oh it says none that's right yes no. um so no additions review of minutes december 4th has anybody read the minutes from december 4th i'll make a motion to accept the minutes and yes i have read the minutes I've heard them. Gee, I'm we so shocked. <laughs> Do we have a second? I'll second it. Okay. Superior, superior job once again done by Carl. They were good minutes. Thank you. It's uh, open for discussion, the minutes. Is there any further discussion? Are there any corrections? None? Not that I saw. All's in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes appear to have it, they do have it. Minutes are passed. Public comment. I see people on the Zoom. Are they members of public or are they here for specific purposes? I'm Nobody Sue Perry. I'm, yeah. re I'm representing Twin Valley Senior Center. Okay. All right. So no I'm public a, comment. Uh, I'm Amelia, and I'm representing Washington Central Unified Union School District. Okay. I just wanted to confirm that um, it, that's on the agenda to discuss. Yes. I think it was at 845. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So the first thing that we are going to discuss, FY 2025 appropriation discussion, Kellogg Hubbard Library. Dan is on. Nobody's here? Nope. Good, good evening. Oh, Dan. Dan. Oh, you're from the library? Yes. Hi. Okay. He what is the man. From, he, he is the man. Okay. <laughs> we're, we're ready to listen to you for a oh, certain great. amount of time. Glad I, glad I joined early. Thank you. Um, thank you so much for having us. Um, our, the East Montpelier representative on our board, Sarah Swift, um, is planning to join as well. She may be here closer to the 640 agenda time that we were told, but um, happy to be here. Um, uh, we're grateful for uh, the support of East Montpelier. Uh, we have really strong um, support and uh, activity from East Montpelier. Um, as I'm sure you've experienced, we are you know, dealing with the effects of inflationary pressures um, on our budget. So um, the biggest pieces are on our, our personnel costs um, and health insurance costs. So um, you may remember that we did not ask for an increase from East Montpelier last year, um, but we are requesting an increase of just over $5,000, um, $5,196 um, in the coming year. Um, that represents a $20 per capita request, um, which is how the State uh, Department of Libraries um, sort of compares uh, municipal support for libraries across the state. Um, that compares to 55, our request to Montpelier is $55, just so, you're, um, so you understand that. Um, and it's in line with what we're requesting from our other um, five towns that we serve. Um, so it's a request of uh, increase of $2 per capita. And it's primarily results, like I said, health insurance and personnel costs. So um, we signed a new union contract in um, March that has 15% um, uh, wage increases over three years. Those went into effect July 1st of this year. Um, so we'll, we're moving into the, we will be moving into the second year of that increase. Uh, in addition to those percentage increases, we set a new wage floor of $20 per hour for our staff. Um, you know, we're competing not just with other libraries across the state and across the region, um, but also with, you know, increased wages at employers all over the state. So, um, and we have wonderful librarians who I'm sure you're all familiar with and um, want to support them. The other piece is that we received a 14% uh, increase on our health insurance premiums from our Blue Cross policy 
going into effect in January. So significant uh, increase there. Um, municipal funding is only about half, 52% of our total budget. So um, I like to say that we're really stretching your dollars um, through uh, draws from our endowment and private fundraising, which we've increased significantly over the years. Um, and the other thing I'll speak to is that um, we're not requesting any increase as a result of the flooding. Um, but I'm sure, as you know, the library experienced about $1.4 million in damage due to the flooding in July um, and through uh, a combination of uh, insurance, private fundraising, and FEMA funds. We expect to emerge after the flood more resilient and, and better able to serve the community. So um, grateful for all the tremendous support that we've gotten from donors and others. And um, I'll stop there. I did submit the report to the town uh, that talks about some of the services that we've provided in East Montpelier, um, but I know you're all pretty familiar with the library. So um, if you have any questions, I'll stop and answer them now. Questions? Yes. Got Tom. Um, then thanks, Dan, and um, w welcome to your position. I think this is the first time you've come to us in, in this position. It's uh, true. Yes, I started in uh, just in late June, so three right. three weeks before the flood. Right, right. So um, could you expand on what you said about emerging more resilient after the flood, thanks to insurance, FEMA, and private fundraising? What, what does that mean, bottom line-wise or in other terms? So we are moving... Um, Basically, the cost was a result of all of our building mechanical systems being located in the basement where they flooded. Um, all of those systems are getting moved. Um, the only one that's staying is our district heat, which is just because we'd have to replumb the entire building in order to move it. But um, we're planning to flood proof that room um, and everything else, our air handlers, our uh, electric uh, elevator con uh, controls, our building heat controls, uh, all of it is moving up out of the basement. Um, so we expect uh, that to have a major impact on, you know, if there is a future flooding event. I mean, right now, I'm worried about that. Um, you know, that recovery would be a lot faster and less expensive. Yeah. Okay. And in terms of the, the bottom line, $1.4 million in damage, was all that covered through insurance, FEMA, and private fundraising? Or did you need to uh, reach into your endowment? We have not reached into our endowment. We um, had a $400,000 flood insurance policy, which we've received. Um, we've raised uh, about $600,000 in grants and donations, um, and we're expecting to receive the rest from FEMA, but it's, a, as I'm sure you're familiar with, quite a process to get any money from them. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And then in your report, um, your, your first report for... 2022-23, you alluded to the tax situation in Montpelier, I believe, if I understood your language correctly. But uh, you know, we're seeing that uh, Montpelier voters may be facing huge increases in their property taxes. And I'm wondering how you think that's going to affect their willingness to uh, keep funding Kellogg Hubbard at the levels it's been funded. Um, well, we had... The city council in Montpelier asked us to petition, um, and we collected uh, nearly 800 signatures in Montpelier, um, which I think is a testament to the support that we enjoy from Montpelier taxpayers. So um, I think they really, the flood gave us an opportunity to demonstrate our value as a, a community space in Montpelier and a necessary, you know, a place for people to to gather and connect and access information and public Wi-Fi available outside of the building and so on and so forth. Yeah. So um, I am cautiously optimistic that we'll uh, receive support. We are asking for you know a pretty sizable increase in Montpelier. It's similar percentage wise, but um, represents the larger dollar amount because Montpelier is our largest funder by far. Right. Okay. Thank you. No further questions at this moment. So the increase is two dollars per capita. Um, I'm it's confusing in your thing here. The increase is two dollars per capita. Two dollars per capita. So it's going thing. from eighteen to twenty. Okay, gotcha. That that's a little more clear. <laughs> yes, we're going from fifty-one to fifty-five in Montpelier. Just to... yeah, I gotcha. Yep. Okay. 
Anybody have any more questions for Dan? Do not. Hey, hey Mike, Seth, quick question. Procedurally, since I'm new to this, do we vote on this to put it on no. the ballot for the we we don't vote on this to put it on the ballot for the no. citizens? It just it's just not yet. On. We do the okay. warning usually all together. Okay. Oh, thanks. Okay, very good. We don't usually do it one in right, a right, time. right, right. You mentioned that last time. I'm good. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for that clarification. Yeah. Anybody thank else you, have any questions? All right. Well, Sarah, thank you, Dan. Sarah just joined, but we're oh, Sarah just way, joined, but we're way ahead of schedule. <laughs> well, we're right on time for beginning the item. <laughs> so, does she have something she want to add? I'm sure she was just going to say nice things about the library and our services, and oh, she's anyway, always Nisha. available to answer any questions about the library. Um, we have re representatives from each of our supporting towns. Sarah, um, we're actually they're ahead of schedule, so I was just wrapping up. Um, so I don't I don't think you're necessary, but if anyone has any questions, um, please feel free to reach out to Sarah or to myself. Uh, always happy to answer this. Sarah, you missed yes. a very controversial part of the conversation. Oh dear. <laughs> well, what I actually wanted to add is how great the library staff has been through the flood and keeping the library open and keeping services open and how lucky we were to have Dan to. Oh. Oh, you're working there. It's, oh, it's I'm working. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I don't, I can't. You were just saying nice things about me. So don't let me stop you. <laughs> yeah. No, I um, and, um, and how lucky we were to have uh, Dan step in at that moment after uh, Jesse Lynn left. Um, and otherwise, we're doing good. The, the circulation, the services for East Montpelier are up. The um, programs for kids and adults um, are going strong. So I think despite our setbacks, that it's been a good year for the library. All right. Sounds good. Nobody has any questions for Sarah? OK. Well, I don't think we'll dwell any longer on your Kellogg Hubbard, Hubbard request. Everyone yeah. seems satisfied. Thank you. We'll put it to the voters and we'll see what happens. All right. Thanks, Dan. Thank sure. you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so we're a little ahead of schedule. We're expecting, are we expecting anybody from RCT? So RCT, I think I thought I saw someone here from RCT. Yes, Caleb is here. Um, Jamie had emailed me earlier from Green Mountain Transit that mm -hmm. um, sh sh likely likely wouldn't be able to attend. Oh, okay. Um, so just because they're kind of in the midst of dealing with flooding and all of their service areas, yeah. and in addition to some lack of internet access for a lot of employees, so so we have someone here though. So if we want to proceed, so the yeah. RCT is here, we can certainly might as well do that. Okay, so FY twenty twenty five appropriation discussion. RCT, Rural Community Transportation, and Green Mountain Transit. So there's nobody here from Green Mountain T Transit, but we do have someone here from RCT, correct? Correct. Okay. We're ready to hear you. Good evening, and thank you all for taking the time. Uh, obviously, it's a lot of challenges going on tonight for um, uh, transportation, but also our communities. My name is Caleb Grant, and I'm the Executive Director of Rural Community Transportation. Um, which is the transportation provider for um, the Northeast Kingdom as well as Lamoille County. Um, I am here today seeking appropriations in support of our US-2 commuter, um, which stops both northbound and southbound in East Montpelier um, in, in the service year 2022, which is the year we have uh, full results for. Um, we had about 714 pickups in East Montpelier for the commuter, both southbound and northbound. The amount we are requesting is consistent with our appropriations from last year, so there is no um, uh, requested increase. The largest challenge to RCT, and I won't speak for GMT, um, but it is with many organizations as the phasing out of um, COVID funding, what was covered by the state traditionally for either the 20% or the 50%, depending on the route, um, is now left to um, uh, local match. So um, you can probably see from our vehicle, if you've ever seen our bus roll through town, we do seek sponsorships. Currently, 
Um, Vermont State University is the sponsor for the US2 commuter, uh, as well as appropriations from every community along the route. So um, with that, I will open up to questions or happy to clarify any points that there is additional information needed. So you, you mentioned the number of riders, but how'd that compare to last year? I actually I could probably look through your literature, but. Um, so can... typically uh, you saw our peak was in prior to COVID. Um, during COVID, you saw a significant decrease um, and we're a little bit closer to um, pre-COVID ridership, but a large quantity of our ridership is state employees who are still on the um, remote work. So what traditionally would have been a five times a week transportation, um, we're now looking at the one or two, depending on what their specific state office requires. So um, typically East Montpelier, we're doing a lot of southbound trips um, as opposed to northbound. Um, but again, the state employees is probably um, attributes the largest decline, but it is nowhere near prior to COVID, but it is significantly up from um, the COVID period. Huh. I'm sorry, I thought I heard you say that there was a significant increase in ridership during COVID. Surely there was a decrease. I apologize. Yes, a decrease. Okay, okay, good. I yeah. may have misheard, but no, we, we've rebounded. Yeah, we've rebounded quite a bit, but not okay. fully. Okay, very good. Thank you. Yep. Any more questions? Nothing? I see it, some nodding, some nothing, some nothing. <laughs> pretty, pretty clear cut. Yeah. Very clear cut. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you zooming in and saying what you said and doing what you do. Um, but I think we're going to move on if no one's got any more questions. We don't want to okay. prolong the agony tonight. We get a long agenda and the weather's crappy. So, yeah, I, I will just add that um, very proudly we are still doing service tonight. Um, we take very seriously that if we drop people off in the morning, we will get them home at night. So um, yeah. whether that's a direct path or not, we are still picking up and uh, transporting back. So thank you for the opportunity. Yeah. And if there aren't any additional questions, um, I'll probably pop off if that works. Yeah. Really. Good, good, good luck. Be safe. Thank you. Well, thank I, you. I very much appreciate all of your support and um, good luck to your community with this recent flooding. Yeah. You. Good it. luck to you. Thank you. Yeah. Take care. All right. Good night. Um, now, the ladies here from Twin Valley Seniors, is that correct? Yes. Laura or Sue, um, I, Sue Carey and okay. um, Denise Wheeler, who's our interim director, had sent yeah. um, a list of the things that we've done over the last year. I, I believe she sent that to Gina, and I think that I'm hoping that you all have a copy of it. It's yep. just basically all the different things we have done. Um, we're working to try to get more volunteers and more activities going for our clients. Um, our biggest project, of course, is the Meals on Wheels project. And, you know, we've served like over 9,400 meals during 2023. We're always in need of money. We're always short of money like everybody else. Um, I write as many grants as I can to get money for Meals on Wheels, but, um, you know, I've had some success and some not success, but that's, that's our really big project to, to get money to keep Meals on Wheels going because we have so many hungry people in the six areas that we serve. And, um, I, of note, I think I should say that we only have two two paid staff people, and those are part-time people. Everything else is done by volunteers. We have over 40 volunteers who come in and help us prep food, help us um, set up the Meals on Wheels um, in containers. We have people who are driving, um, and anybody who can do anything. Um, we have a lot of volunteers and a lot of help. If it wasn't for them, we wouldn't be able to continue doing the work we do. And we've had some, some hard times this year, like everybody else, the basement flooded. We lost a lot of food. We lost, um, we lost one of our freezers and our range had to be replaced. And that was a huge expense. 
So um, we're coming forward to ask for the same amount as we asked for last year in our appropriation request. And um, we, I appreciate you letting me come on and talk to you. And if you have any questions, I'll be glad to try to answer them. Any questions? Nothing. Nothing, nothing. There is a future discussion, Sue, about the, um, it's a request for the paving for Twin Valley. And I yes, mentioned I, to Denise that that was going to be later. So I'm not sure if you're going to stick around for that discussion. I am. Okay. I, I just I'm wanted going to, to address that. Okay, perfect. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you for all you do for your, your uh, stalwart of the community. Thank you for yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sue. Yep, dealing thanks. with your limited resources. Yeah, I can see a budget's not very big. It's like, whoa, you yeah. do a lot with not much money. Right. For sure. Yeah, I've seen your request been on the floor and remember one year it was raised. <laughs> People are like, no, no, they deserve more money. We're open to that, by the way. <laughs> right, I was thinking the same. <laughs> Could happen. Um, so no more questions. We'll move to the next. Now, do we have someone here from the senior center, senior activity center? We expect anybody? We may, yes. Matt Wilson, yes, will likely be here later. So I don't know if we want to move on to other yeah, items in the agenda right. and come back because we're way ahead of schedule. We're way ahead, right now, but, but I'd like to stay ahead. So that means we'll shoehorn somebody else in that time because we're 10 to 7. If you want to just pop down, since we do have someone from the school here. Um, yeah. We do. We could discuss the town meeting warning because the question there, why the school is here, is about the mailing of the ballot. So, just oh, right. want to mention that. So, yeah, let's do that. Bailey is not hanging around until right, right, right. nine o'clock. So, nine o'clock. That that's may a be a good time. one that's to. Uh, what do you think? Yeah, that's <laughs> a long time. Be, yeah, that may be a good one to go ahead and jump ahead yeah. to. Yeah, it gets boring. <laughs> <laughs> okay, discussion on twenty twenty four town meeting warning. Consideration approval for WCUUSD school board to authorize ballot mailing to all registered voters and consideration of town ballot mailing to all registered voters. So this lady here yes, mm -hmm. is here to ask us what our plan is. Is that what you're wondering about? Yeah. So thanks for having me, uh, Amelia Contrada, and I am a um, appointed, temporary appointed board member. And there's one other appointed board member for a spot for three-year term, Zach Sullivan, and then the chair, um, Flor Diaz Smith. Um, so we will collect the signatures and typically, I think um, for the elections, we put in a request that the names um, be added to the, the ballot that's mailed USPS. Okay. So we're, we haven't decided whether we're going to mail ballots to all registered voters, but we have the last two years and we're probably going to continue. I'm, I can't speak for the rest of the select board, but I'm in strong favor of doing that because we've had very, very good results. With this part of the rest of the select board agrees. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Yeah, I, I don't want to, uh, I'm not speaking for anybody, I'm just speaking for myself, but I'm just telling you that it's, it's, uh, it's a really good approach to get voters to participate, and I have heard no objection to it. So that's probably going to be our plan. I think Carl concurred with that, and Scott did. So we've got at least three members of the select board on board with uh, mailing town ballots out. So didn't we usually put the two ballots together in the same envelope? That's yeah. right. So that's yeah. what we're probably going to do the same thing. So is that, was that answering your question? Yes, it does. Great. Okay. Yeah. yeah we appreciate it on behalf of the board. No. It's just a way to further democracy at this stage in our, in our country that seems to work. And, you know, people don't think about voting like they used to, but when they have the ballot in front of them, they participate. So it seems to work. Now, Amelia, uh, are we yes. in the same situation that we were last year where all five 
uh, school district towns need to approve the co-mailing of the ballots for that to happen? I believe there's a there's a decision per town. I believe so. You, um, so I, I'm not sure the end. I'm, maybe my question wasn't clear. Uh, can can East Montpelier mail out the Washington Central ballot if one of the other four towns says, no, we don't want to do that in our town? That actually is, I can't answer that question. I'm not completely okay. positive, um, but Fleur Dia Smith, um, I'm sure could answer that. I'm yeah. sure she has that information. My understanding, um, no, I'm not even going to go there. Okay. <laughs> I don't want the wrong information. So Fair enough. It's a good question. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, that's the way it was last year, and I don't know whether anything has changed. Okay, they could say no way, right? And that would stop. That would stop that. So I know. I think that you're. I. I'm not going to say for sure, but I believe that it it the process is a continuation only because I'm just realizing there was a request last meeting. For everyone. Um, at least one member from each town to attend the town meetings to make the request. And so it makes sense that if that was the strategy, then they're they're trying to coordinate and make sure that everyone's on the same page. That's my my educated oh. guess. Mm -hmm. But you're talking about somebody attending town meeting and discussing it? To make a request so that all five towns could... Oh, the, yeah. right. The names on the ballot in order for one, you know. Yeah. If that's yeah. if that's the case, then um, maybe just to be extra clear, we should pass a motion to the effect of what we've agreed to. We so, want to have a motion now. Uh, I think so. D does that seem in order? I have no idea. Does it hurt? It doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt. Yeah. Okay. It does not hurt, and then we're bound to it. You know, in our minutes. Yeah. So, I so I I move then to um, approve the co-mailing of East Montpelier town ballots and WS WCUUSD school ballots to all registered voters for the March twenty twenty four town and school meetings. Uh, at the expense of the town. I'll second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes do have it. Appear to have it, they do have it. Okay. I think we're good. Thank you. Thank okay. you for your tireless work. Thanks for your work. Yeah, Thanks for thank popping you. by today. Thank good you. Good luck in the floods. Good night. Good night. I think you're here all early for nine o'clock. I don't know. Maybe you just want to hear us talk. I really appreciate it. Tell, tell Flora she's got the rest of the menu. My baby to sleep. You want to see democracy in action, I think. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's see. It's seven. Uh, Do you want to discuss storm repairs, FEMA? From sure. July? Sure. Next item. Yeah. Update on July 2023 school repairs and Fema, that sounds like kind of a boring subject. Let's do it. Well, it's uh, hopefully it stays boring after tonight. Um, yeah, no kidding. The real news here is that I have been trying to get an answer on Sodom Pond yeah. Road and the culvert. There is a stone culvert that failed uh, during the July flood. Yeah. And it's a stone culvert. Yep. So the big question is when we have a structure that old is whether it was considered historic. So after going back and forth with FEMA for the last few months, finally, I got it punted over to the state. Um, apparently isn't the normal process, but thankful. Thank, I'm very thankful to the state that they did take the initiative to determine um, whether that culvert was historic and it was deemed not historic. Therefore, our repairs are in no way hindered. Um, by needing to retain that structure in any way. Yeah. So I included the letter that I received from the state um, with information about that, you know, that tells right. you about that determination. That determination has been provided to FEMA as well, because obviously that's an important factor in our repairs being eligible for reimbursement, that we do not have to retain that structure. 
So I don't know if the select board has any feelings, positive or negative on that determination from the state. Um, I don't know what residents in the area are going to feel, um, but certainly it's significantly um, more cost effective to not have to keep that structure um, because now we can just get something engineered and designed in that area and hopefully not have a repeat of the July flood. Yeah. Hopefully we're not having that right now. Um, the yeah. other bit of information is that I finally kind of got some info that VTrans, I did not know that, so learned that last week too, actually can do um, H and H. Um, it's the hydrological and hydraulic studies for location. The problem is from what I have heard through the grapevine, the state's way out like a year plus on being able to do this. However, I did complete two requests because we do need H and H studies done at both Sanders Circle and Sodom Pond. We need more right. than that, but those are the most critical, in particular Sanders Circle, where the road is currently impassable. Yeah. Um obviously it's a circle, so it's not destroying anybody too much, but we need we need to get that fixed next year. So I submitted the request to VTrans. I have asked but I haven't heard back yet on what timing we may be looking at for them to be able to complete these studies. I'm going to guess their time frame is not going to be efficient for us um, because I think we're going to need it done more timely. The cost for an H and H study is reimbursable by FEMA if the H and H study states that you need a structure larger than what you had in place prior to the storm. Okay. The stone culvert is going to be a given um, that we are not going to obviously be replacing that structure. Sander Circle, we're 90% sure that one is also not going to be replaced with the exact same structure. Early indications are that we need different structures in both of these locations. So I just wanted to let the select board know, I want to get an answer back from VTrans first on, are we looking, I mean, what if they say they can get to this in two months? doubt it but if they say it's 12 months odds are we need to go ahead and and hire an engineer to perform this work and hope that the h and h study will end up being reimbursed by fema yeah from what i've heard they're not extremely expensive that the, the bigger expense is already going to be reimbursed by fema which would be the design of the replacement uh, in both of these locations but so I just wanted to let you know this was kind of out there. So stay tuned. Um, once I hear more back from VTrans, then I will let you know because I would seek obviously select board approval before I issue. We will need to issue an RFP for both of these locations to get designed because we just don't know what the value of them will be. So we kind of need to follow all the FEMA guidelines in case they're of a certain dollar amount that we need to make sure we're following all of their processes to a T. So... That's the FEMA. Or so you're the, going to be on the state list for doing that. We're on yes. the state list, correct. But yeah. I, I did tell Michelle Redman, who is our um, our district rep with VTrans, that the timing yeah. may mean that we need to, yeah. to hire someone to do the work. But yeah. I, I asked her to just let me know what they're looking at so that then we can make a decision on what we need to do. Yeah. But obviously, we need to repair Sanders Circle yeah. next year. So. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So that is the storm repairs of FEMA. Question from Carl. Um, what's yes. that? Question, please. Um, so Gina, I mean, th this isn't your area of expertise, but in case you happen to glean any um, any possible answer to this, how come, and maybe it's just a rhetorical question, how complicated can it be to do a study to determine that a larger structure than what was previously installed is needed. I mean, it seems to me like you could check a couple boxes. Did a storm overwhelm the existing structure? Yes. Has God given us a promissory note that no such storm of such uh, magnitude will come again? No. Therefore, it needs to be replaced by a larger structure. Yeah, a lot of it is just the math of how, like, what is the acreage of water that's yeah. feeding into the area? What's the flow of the water? So right. I've seen some of these. Again, this is not going to be our bigger expense. The bigger expense is going to be the actual design of the replacement mm -hmm. and the engineering of that. From what I've heard, these are somewhere around twelve to $1,500-ish of your design expense. So we're not talking a significant amount of money here. So to your point, Carl, that kind of fits in that 
I don't think they're that difficult to do, but yeah. I'm sure the state have a, has a significant backlog right now that we're, they're working through. So sure. and do you even know in speaking with FEMA, even our FEMA rep said to me, our risk is pretty low that these would not be reimbursed by FEMA because right. they, they should say that we need larger structures than what we have today. Yeah. Okay. And do you know whether uh, any output from the H and H study will be useful in the design. Will we get the specs? Oh, yes, it yep. it will dictate what size essentially yeah. needs to be there. Yeah. Okay. So that's important. That's great. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so we're still a little bit ahead. Zoe has a question. What's that? Zoe, Zoe has, has a question. question. Oh, okay. Not that important. I just was curious. Did you say that the H and H study was the only part that would be reimbursable? No, we would be reimbursed for the entire design. Okay. It's just if if for some reason the H and H study came back again, let's use Sodom Pond and said we think you should put another stone culvert in there that's as small as you had in before. Not going to happen. Um, FEMA would say, okay, we're not going to reimburse that portion of your bill. That is the H and H study, but no, they re would reimburse everything. The replacement, absolutely. Everything else is reimbursed. It's just the H and H study needs to state that you do need a different structure. Where they caution you on really doing these is if you have an area that's kind of always been a problem for you and you want to do a study to see what it is. Well, that study could tell you that what you have is actually fine. You know, there could be other reasons causing that, causing an issue. So that's where you run the risk of doing them. Um, Again, even our FEMA rep said to me, we're really not looking at any risk if we do end up hiring out to have this work done. It will be reimbursed by FEMA. But I still want to do my due diligence, you know, and at least see what I hear back from the state. I don't want to make an assumption yet until they definitively tell me that we're looking at a year out to get those studies done. Then obviously we need to probably make a different decision. Any more questions? Okay. Should we do the ash tree management grant application? Yeah. So really what this is, the Resilient Roads Committee, I happened to drive by them yesterday. They are out marking trees. Um, I think they were attempting to do some today as well. Um, so they're currently working on drafting two grant proposals to try to get funds for the current year ash tree management projects. Normally, I would bring you kind of a grant application for you all to review before I submit it. They're in the process of working. They're due January 5th. So this is the only meeting we have between now and then. So I'm kind of just getting a preemptive approval from you that when I do get these drafts from the Resilient Roads Committee that I can submit these grant applications on behalf of the town. And hopefully we can secure some funding for our projects this year. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't even necessarily think Submit. you need a, a motion or anything for this. It's because I'll bring you the grant agreements yeah. if we get yeah. them back. Right. That you'll have to authorize me to sign. Yeah, yeah. Um, but as long as you're okay, I'll, I'll submit those applications. Um, We're okay. As soon as I get info from them. We're okay. So, yeah, I told them I thought this would kind of be a no-brainer. So I think it's a no-brainer. Yeah. But you never know. You never I, know. You never know. Never assume. You may not want grant money for never some reason. Never assume. No, it, there's a lot of brain in here. It's just it's it's an automatic. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we're still significantly ahead of schedule. Fifteen minutes. It's not a That's bad good. thing. No. That's great. What do we have to do that could be fairly quick? Town treasury report. That's fairly quick. Sure. Usually. Um, what do you have? I should look in the memo here. So the standard reporting package you have, but big news really, I guess, here is just an update on where we are with the delinquent tax collector reports, probably the most interesting. Yeah. I know that I don't have the exact figure because I didn't think to ask that in all the somewhat chaos of today, but um, I know one of the four taxpayers that went to tax sale um, actually did come and pay their bill. Oh. Uh, i I think it was the Thursday or Friday. Um, so that I know we are under that 
six. I think their bill was somewhere around nine thousand. I believe. Whoa, beyond the forty. They came and paid. So, um, she had written. Michelle had written this before that payment had occurred. So, um, it was kind of a. I think it was on Friday. So, um, so yeah. So we're actually now down to three taxpayers that would be headed to tax sale. Yeah. And they've huh. got a pretty low delinquent balance at this point. Right. So. The current late balance is pretty comparable, actually. Yeah. 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 The delinquency is good that we're cutting that back. Yeah. And then on the standard reporting package, I guess I've got, got that somewhere right. here. Nothing leaps out at us. No. Not yet. Is everyone perusing the multi-page document? Well, I haven't. Oh, here we go. Accounts. You have it. I have it. I know. I just had to find it and see a paper. <laughs> That's okay. No, perfect. I'm not complaining. I commented, but <laughs> uh so. What does everyone think about the town finances? Are you digging in here? Yeah, I, I read through. Can I, <laughs> my standing on my my normal um, my normal issue? Can can we continue to invest some more money, even in short term instruments? Michelle can continue to because there there's still plenty of. Um, cash that's just sitting that's that's not earning anything for maybe something some other uh, cash flow statements if we're if, if that's a relevant um issue to mention at this point which one's got so yeah. much cash <clears throat> um checking just the cash just the cash yeah i'm trying i'm having it's harder to follow everything here um we're just doing the town you just your report Gina or we're or have we moved on to the treasurer's status report oh no this all the treasurer stuff is from Michelle right no no I understand is that is that a relevant conversation now <clears throat> or am I, uh, am I jumping how much cash is in the accounts so it's not gaining interest I think right am I, am I jumping ahead is that a relevant conversation now you can. Yeah, go ahead. Why not? Okay. Yeah, no, I, I understand that that's that's a Michelle issue, but um I'm just wondering whether we can get a little more aggressive um with our uh with, with turning some of the some of our cash into some interest bearing um investments, even if it's extremely short term, which it could be a week, a month. Anyway, that's just just looking at the uh at the accounts. Um some of them are are certainly earning, but there's you know there's apparently a million to two ninety five thousand um, that are not interest bearing still. The if I'm reading it correctly, uh, special accounts, um, yeah, capital reserve fund exactly. Yeah, I mean that doesn't look like there's any interest happening there. Well, they're included in the town checking. Oh, oh, the oh, that's yeah. just broken down. I apologize. That's not okay. <clears throat> okay. Thank, thank you for that clarification. Okay. Then I, then I withdraw my, um, then my question or concern. She's on top of it. Okay. So looking through, what do we have? This a red flag, so to speak, or green flags. A green flag usually means go. I mean, we're we're talking, you know, like know. vanilla and chocolate. I know. Strawberry. Red flag generally means something that could cause alarm. Correct? Black yeah. and red. A green flag means let's get going. That's that's positive. That means an up market, not a down market. <laughs> okay. Okay. So I don't see anything too alarming. 
Gina's right on top of it. I think if there was, I looked through it also, and if, I think if there was something that was alarming, oh, so you're just, challenging. So you're not, you're not dissecting this. You're letting other people. No, 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 no. I did read oh. through it. I did. Okay, you did. I, I, I did my due diligence, my fiduciary responsibility as a select board person. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, I don't hear a lot of comments going on, so I think we can move on. Does anybody have strong feelings about looking at the accounts any anymore? I I, I just have a procedural question, and I guess it's okay. Gene and Seth. And what, yeah. so, when do we really start to get um, really into the the nitty gritty for the fiscal um, July first? adoption uh, well obviously it's got to be it's put in front of the voters so it's going to be next month we're going to be presenting yeah. the, uh, the final budget stuff, yeah yeah we have to have stuff approved by about the 20th of january that goes into okay, so next, so within the next two meetings we'll have yes. to approve a budget okay thank yeah. you yeah okay thanks for that clarification be yeah. ready for a possible extra meeting in january as part of that process it's Okay. There's no guarantee we will have an extra meeting. Right. <laughs> it has happened before, but I have a feeling it's not going to happen this year, but who knows? Hope okay. for the best plan for the worst. Yeah, sure. Uh, tax collection update. We're done with that. Okay. 717. Um, looks like, yeah, those things. Oh, are we going to discuss the... FY 2025 budget development. That's in there. I don't know if you that's, want to get that's into in that there. We can, but... since we're just talking about money. Yeah. Sure. sure. Let's talk about it. Is that the same packet or no? I see the What's ambulance the service. Right after that. Yeah. I see it. Oh, that's still the ambulance service. Here we go. Yep. Wow. Okay, this is on the same vein, so this is a good idea to discuss this now. What do you want us to look at, Gina? Well, you can I've given you a summary in the memo because we typically kind of hone in on where we are from a tax rate perspective. Mm -hmm. Um and then I've kind of given you some detailed info on where we're seeing our biggest increases and this does include which it was a precursor to this agenda item the numbers we received from the fire department for the fire and ambulance yeah so this does include their updated numbers um overall the budget is obviously increasing uh for salaries that's primarily just based on the staffing structure we have in place and yeah. increase for employees assumed. Um, benefits are actually going down a bit based on the current selections that employees have made for their benefits. And then everything else, fire and ambulance is going up based on the numbers that we received from them. And most everything else is really being just driven by market conditions, um, highway operations, going up because things are more expensive. So um, it's really, there's no glaring massive difference in the budget other than tweaking the numbers based on where we see current costs. It's not like there's anything new that wasn't in there right. before, except for the child care but it, uh, contribution tax, which is only $2,900. So I did not call that out. Um, that is something new that the state passed. So just so you all know, there is a tax, additional tax on uh, wages. But again, it was $2,900 of the budget. So wasn't material, was not a significant impact. Yeah. That's... Uh... And in the notes, I've tried to put, if the budget's based on like insurance, for example, well, yeah. I got... I have information from BLCT, um, any kind of dues, if I've received anything in particular, then the number has been updated and based on the source document.
Okay. Right now, the tax rate is not increasing as it did much as it did last year. No. Which is a positive. So, uh, is it about so, three cents? Or? Yeah. Yeah. 3.6 cents. 3.6? Yeah. Yeah. No, that's not horrible. And of course, this is something I look at like every other day right now. Yeah. So, yeah. No, I get it. Because information trickles in or yeah. I just give it a fresh set of eyes. Yeah. After not looking at it for a day or so. Yeah. Any questions for Gina? Nope. Pretty. I, I did look. I did scrub through it. It's pretty straightforward. I mean, it kind of is what it is. Right? Yeah. Is a. Well, it's helpful. She broke out those. Oh no! Very. It's really very interesting, actually. Thank you. Yeah. I, Depressingly so. I I geekily I geekily geekily enjoyed reading it. It could be worse. Yeah. Oh yeah. So the ambulance service is twelve point seven percent. You've got, and the fire department is five point one. Yeah, those are the numbers they get correct. Yeah. The percents you see in your memo are based on the impact of the yeah. total budget, not yeah. each individual line item. Right, right, right. But yeah, I've pulled the numbers they gave us in here, and yeah, obviously the agenda item preceding this was you have all those reports as well here for yeah any resident that would like to see that as well. Right. Hmm. I mean, the ambulance service has gone up double digits, I think, every year for years. But I'm not 100% sure of that, but I'm pretty sure of it. Is that your impression, Gina? Yeah. It, it, I mean, I've only been here. This is my second budget cycle, but certainly has been a pretty big jump for every the few year. years I've been here. It does concern me a lot. That's another item. To discuss later i see we've got that it's a separate item well, we yeah and obviously i've rolled their number into the yeah, budget right now but that's yeah I that's up I, to the select board what number goes into the budget so right, i just right. put their number in for now but yeah it'll yeah. be a discussion for you all to have of course yeah i'd like to hear okay. some explanation on that when, when appropriate any any more questions i have a question can you hear me this is deb yeah you can hear me? Okay, great. I'm having trouble with my Zoom, so I'm on the phone and on my laptop. I don't know where you're hearing me, but um, under total tax-related charges in the revenues part, under the uh, beginning of the second page, page two of eight, land use change tax, $2,000 collected this year. I believe that should be up underneath reimbursements because it's in the category of the current use hold harmless, the state equalization reimbursement. Actually, the state equalization reimbursement is a better example of something that's equivalent in the sense that the current use hold harmless is what the state gives to the town to make up for the reduction in taxes, town taxes that is um, related to people being in the current use program. Mm -hmm. The state equalization reimbursement line is what the state actually sends to the town to help reimburse for the listers time spent on the equalization study every year. That's a dollar per parcel. So that's at 1248. And the one that's down below, which I believe belongs up here with reimbursements, that land use change tax. But the, if you, if someone who's in the current use program withdraws some portion of their property or their entire property from the land use program from current use, the listers, um, are being reimbursed for the time they spend administering that program with the state. We do a lot of work on it at our end. Whenever they collect a tax, this happens only when somebody pulls out of the program and there's a penalty when they develop the land or sell it or do whatever they do with it. We're, we're allowed, the town is given up to 10% of the tax that the state collects as a reimbursement for the time that the listers spend on the current use program. So that $2,000 is really a reimbursement, the same way that the state equalization is a reimbursement for the time that we spend on the state equalization study every year. We've got another one of these coming up. We're gonna get another $2,000 this year, I believe again. Then I can look at what account, what account that is, but the 2,000 you're talking about was actually an actual number. Um, so I could make sure yeah. that yeah. in the series of accounts I'm pulling into this bucket, um, where that account is statused. Um, it could be that 
it pulled in here and it shouldn't, but typically these right. are going. Because it's, it's, not actually, it's not actually a tax receipt. It's a reimbursement that the state is sending to us specifically set up because they involve the listers so much in the current use program. And the only way they have an opportunity to reimburse us for it is when they actually exact a penalty. And then we are given 10% of that penalty. You know, I, I understand that what, you're saying. What, I, what I'm saying is I, I need to look at what account that was coded to. These categories align with how the accounts roll up or they should on the budget status report. So that's what I'm saying. If if that if the account that this was coded to is in this bucket of accounts, yeah. I'll have to look at the reporting. It 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 could be it it ended up actually posting to an account where you're saying it shouldn't be. But at this point, that ship would have sailed because it's a fiscal 23 actual number. So we wouldn't be moving it at this point. So I can look at what account account that is in. It looks like it's, yep. I mean, you have it as other, so. Well, yeah, what I'm little, saying is the way this this, yeah, yeah. this feeds off of the budget status report, so yeah. depending on where that account right, right, right. lives, that's how I yeah. believe they rolled in here, but. Yeah, okay. But so that I can take a look at. Yeah. So what my point is, is if that's the account it's in and that's where that account is classified in our budget status report, I'm not going to move that yeah, actual fine. number. We can't move that. At this point. I got it. Yeah. Any other questions or comments? Okay. So I'm going to put that aside and say that we are done with the discussion on FY 2025 development. Okay. Now, we are right on time for Montpelier Senior Activity Center. Is that lady here? Matt is here. And Arn is here. Oh, okay. All right. So we're ready to discuss this. And we have Hi, here. Uh, for the record, can we have your full name, Arnie, please? Sure. Hi, th uh, this is Arnie McMullen, Director of Recreation and Senior Services for the City of Montpelier. Nice to see everybody tonight. Good to see you. Thank right. you. Did, did, do, did you all get a copy of the PowerPoint presentation? Uh, I guess so. Mm -hmm. like sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have a copy. Yep. Yep. We have a copy. Perfect. Sorry, somehow I muted myself. Um, so I'll go through the I'll go through the PowerPoint presentation to share a little bit of information in regards to what the senior center is about and you know the the folks we serve, um, for, especially for anybody who may be be new to your board. Um, mm -hmm. But it's a uh, it's quite an active place and and a lot and the seniors seem to really love it. So a little bit about MSAC is it's a place for lifelong learning, healthy aging, socialization, nutritious community meals, and access to resources on aging in the region. MSAC serves the city of Montpelier as well as our surrounding towns, including East Montpelier, Berrytown, Berlin, Callis, Middlesex, Moortown, Northfield, Plainfield, Roxbury, and Worcester. Our dynamic senior center provides a third space for retirees, working older adults, and adults in need of socialization, socialization and connection, which is especially true since COVID had hit and people were so isolated for so long. Um, classes designed for all ages of older adults. MSAC provides programming that reaches seniors of all age groups from 50 to 90 plus. Bone Builders, pictured to the right, is one of the most popular classes with four dedicated instructors teaching hundreds of the members each semester. With we offer classes in arts and humanities, fitness, and active living and wellness. We look to the needs of our members to ensure great experiences. Affordable and accessible programming. MSAC members and the public use our space in a variety of ways. For example, coffee and conversation meets every Monday morning to discuss wide ranging topics in a comfortable setting. 
We offer over a dozen of these drop-in groups each semester. It is our commitment to take care of the older adults in our region, whether they are, are, are a paying member or not. Another area is building long-lasting friendships. What makes our senior center stand out are the connections we make amongst our membership and community partners. Staff work directly with our members every day and participate in each in their activities, such as our potluck lunch shown above. Of several great partnerships, our Feast Senior Meals Program hosts volunteers from Montpelier High School and students work in a commercial kitchen setting, which promotes career building and connections with our senior members. Feast Senior Meals, uh, providing healthy catered meals to our members. Feast Senior Meal serves more than just meals on wheels. Feast is a nutritional resource for the whole community. They offer a farm stand, which has served over 50 adults each week since September, 2023. Feast offers access to nutritional guidance and support through our partnerships. They are also host special events such as Bernie Sanders Town Hall back in June. Creativity and engagement. <clears throat> a cornerstone of healthy aging and staying engaged is using one's mind in new ways. MSAC supports creative outlets with classes and programs designed to stimulate the mind and foster genuine expression. Among the several art classes we offer, we also have, we also have tabletop, weekly tabletop games, um, host art shows and community events like our upcoming Puzzle Palooza and curate a small but thriving library of books, puzzles, DVDs, and magazines. Exploring New England. One of the things that's exciting about MSAC is um, MSAC holds several chips annually and popular attractions in Vermont, New Hampshire. Uh, MSAC also acquired, I'm going to update this, a 12-passenger van in the past year, which has opened the doors to new activities locally and bring in more members on trips. The van is also really nice because it does have a lift, so it's accessible, so we can get anybody, um, anybody to be able to move around easily. Mobility is another crucial piece to healthy aging, and we look for trips that are not only fun, but accessible to seniors of all ages. Um, <clears throat> a place for healthy aging, despite set setbacks from the COVID pandemic and 2023 flood, MSAC continues to serve the older adults of Montpelier and surrounding adults with high quality and affordable programming. In 2024, we are looking to hire a program and membership director, which will boost our ability to serve our membership and provide more value to the community. <clears throat> so with that being said, we're on the in the process. I was hoping to be at the meeting tonight, um, but with the amount of flooding that we've taken on today, one of the roads that I normally am able to get home on was actually underwater. So I had to, <laughs> had to take the interstate just to get home. Um, but the Montpelier activity, um, okay, let me just step back here. So MSAC ap appreciates the support of East Montpelier voters and residents, and we look forward to serving more of you in the coming year. We recognize the importance of other area resources for aging Vermonters to your residents and believe in working collaboratively with fellow senior centers and agencies to provide the best support. Due to inflationary and optional operational costs and our continued commitment to offering high quality services and programming, the Montpelier Senior Activity Center respectfully requests level funding of $9,700 for our annual appropriation request to your voters for the fiscal year 2025. We thank you and for your consideration of this request. <clears throat> and we're and the city of Montpelier is still working on our budget because we're in the process of still crunching numbers as most towns probably are due to all the uh, damages from the July flood and other challenges that we've been facing with the multiple of damages that happened to the city um, from the past summer flood. So if anybody has any questions, um, 
happy to answer. No questions for Arnie? Just for the sake of the minutes, um, Matt, could you explain your connection with MSAC? Yeah, so I'm the communication development coordinator for the Senior Activity Center. Thank you. Yeah, we have a we have a pretty good team and we're working on adding an, um, another member, which we hope to have hired in January. So that's the program and membership director. So oh, right. I see that's vacant, yeah. And right, right now, I wish I, like I said, I wish I could have been there because I actually, Matt had prepared some handouts for me to give to everybody. And we can probably email some copies to you to also look at later um, in regards to the, you know, the types of programs and how many programs we offer. Right now, this semester for the winter, I believe we're, we're right around 50 plus or minus programs that we're offering to the senior community. You guys are pretty valuable. I used to sit on your finance committee. So. Okay, <clears throat> pretty well aware, and I've been a, I've been a member too for years. Yeah. Thank you for it's your work. Wonder, yeah, it's a wonderful facility, and for those of you who know who may or may not know, this is my first year at the helm of the senior center. Um, so it's also new to me, but I also been involved with recreation for those of you who may have had kids in youth sports and everything for the last 30 years. So I've been around Montpelier now for a pretty long time. <clears throat> thank you. Well, thank you for zooming in. Um, does anybody have any more questions? Pretty, no. pretty straightforward. Yeah, thank you both. And the... Request. Thank you for your level. Thank you for your level funding request. Oh, yeah. Well, thank, thank you, you for, for enter. Thank you for entertaining us and uh, allowing us to uh, speak at your select board. I appreciate it. All right. Yes. Thank you. All right. You were more entertaining for us than we probably were for you. <laughs> it was all good. I was I was looking at your at your agenda and I said, "Holy cow, that's a busy agenda!" And when I got on, I saw you're all the way down to you know, the ash management, I said, oh, no, they missed me. <laughs> no, no, we, we circled around you and came back. Just no, to that's make sure perfect. That gave you the right time. Um, yep, no, perfect. But if there's nothing else for this gentleman or these two gentlemen, we can move on to the next um, item. Can I just make one comment? Sure. Um, Denise Wheeler is now on Zoom. And she is our interim director at Twin Valley Senior Center. And I kind of just tried to fill in for her because she was expecting to be on at 710. Um, she might have some other um, thoughts that she wants to let the okay. select board know about. Okay, so let's, I think we're done with the Montpelier Senior Activity Center. Okay, thank you. And now- Thank you very much. Thank you. Now we're got to circle back, I guess, to Twin Valley. Is that what you said? We can. Mario. Hi, Denise. How you doing? Everybody good? Nobody got flooded yet? Pretty no, wild couldn't. out there. Pretty wild. It stopped raining now. Yeah. So I'm not sure. Um, thank you, Sue, for being in there. Um, I'm not sure what Sue said, but you know, we're a, we're a very small, way smaller than Montpelier um, Senior Center. And we serve the towns of Marshfield, Plainfield, Cabot, Callis, Woodbury, East Montpelier, and a portion of Montpelier now. Um, our annual operating budget is roughly $250,000. And a lot of that $250,000 we do by fundraising um, and asking the towns for appropriations. Uh, we do not charge a membership fee, which most, I guess, other centers do. Um, we, I sent um, a list. I don't know if you all got it. I sent a list of what we've been up to in 2023. Did, did the board yeah. members get that list? Yeah, we saw that. Okay, yeah, good. We've... I mean, we do a lot 
for such a small organization, we have the equivalent of about two, two and a half staff members and everything else is done by volunteers and board members. So we, yeah. we, do, an, we do a lot for such a small organization. Our um, appropriation request is the same as last year, $6,000. Um, yeah. so hopefully you had a chance to look at the list to see how many things we do. And our mission, um, in, is to facilitate the social, emotional, and physical well-being of independent citizens in our service area by providing access to community resources, services, and activities that maintain the independence and wellness of all citizens, helping them remain in their communities. And what I've learned in my time doing this is that not only does food provide for good physical health, but it also provides for emotional health. If you're at home alone, nobody's around day after day, sometimes the only person these folks see is the person delivering the meal. And our drivers oftentimes come back and say, oh, so-and-so was really talkative today um, because that's the only person they see in person to talk to. So we provide a lot of um, emotional support to folks, the folks that come into the center, come in to play cards, socialize, work on puzzles, um, and we're always looking for creative and new opportunities for the services that we provide. Um, one of the things that I forgot to put on the list that I sent out was that we also have um, free tax clinics for anybody that wants to come in. Um, AARP holds the clinics um, and they're free to anyone that comes in to have their taxes done. Yeah, you, you listed you listed that on your on the letter on the it's listed. I did? Yeah. Oh yeah. okay. Well good on me. I thought I didn't. Um so like I said we're you know we're we're pretty small. Um and we do a lot of really great things. I've had people come into the center that they just rave about how much they like our center because it's homey. It's smaller. You know, they feel like they get a lot more personal one-on-one -on -one attention. Um, we have a new, a new cook and he lives actually in East Montpelier and he's doing a wonderful job. The meals are really wonderful they're you know they all all the meals that we serve have to be pro approved by a central vermont council on aging dietitian so they're all healthy and within different guidelines we also provide a lot of meals to our homebound folks that have special dietary needs soft foods diabetes um you know things like that illnesses that people have, we try to provide meals that meet those nutritional guidelines that they have to follow. Anybody have any questions? I have, all question. Question. I have a question. This is Deb. Oh, Hi, Deb. Can okay. you hear me? Yeah. Hi. Yeah. Um, who am I? Oh, I'm sorry. Your first name is Denise? Yes. Denise? Really? Yeah. Hi. Hi, Denise. Um, I put together the town report, so I'm always looking for this kind of information to include in the town report, and I will probably be contacting you about putting together your page and what kind of stuff you want to include on it. I was just wondering if you have a breakdown of how many of these Meals on Wheels are for people in East Montpelier specifically. Um, we can we can get that to you. Okay. Because it's nice when you can you know can point to exactly what is happening in our town. Um, I don't know if I don't know if Montpelier Senior Center, I should have asked when he was on, whether he has that kind of a breakdown too, in terms of how many people in East Montpelier specifically are using the Montpelier Senior Center, but you're the ones that are providing all the meals on wheels for our town, right? Right. And it looks like also for part of Montpelier now too. Yep, yep. Montpelier yep. got overwhelmed and um, the Council on Aging asked us to take on a portion of Montpelier, which is, has worked out well. You know, we, we serve for a small group, we we serve not over nine thousand four hundred meals a year. That's a mm -hmm. lot of meals. 
And does that come out of your operating budget or is that like a completely standalone separate program? Well, I can I can send you a breakdown of how much it costs us to prepare a meal. Sorry, when I we seem to have a smoke detector that's having issues tonight and keeps going off. I can send you a breakdown of what it costs us to prepare a meal. It's roughly about fifteen dollars for us to prepare a meal. And mm -hmm. We get reimbursement. We get some reimbursements from the town appropriations. We get some from Council on Aging. Um, we ask people. We we can't charge because we're a nonprofit. So we can we can only ask people for a donation. Some folks can't afford to donate, so they don't donate anything, or they donate whatever they can afford. So uh -huh. we roughly have to make up about five dollars per meal. That goes out the door. Five dollars of that meal has to be made up by us doing fundraising. And and the new cook that you took on is one of your staff people that you have to pay out of your budget too. Yes. Mhm. Mm okay. Thank you. Uh, we'll be in touch again. I just was curious about that. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. So while you're there, we'd like to move on to the ARPA fund. Uh, request because we had some questions about the paving request from Twin Valley. Yeah. So, now, before you, can I ask a question before you sure. go there? The ARPA funds, if you are generous enough to give us some of your funding, um, do you, do we have to spend it? I think it's by the is it the end of the summer or beginning of fall of next year. Isn't that when you have to? I think that we have to spend it, but they don't have to spend Correct. it. We don't yeah, have, okay, we have that's to spend we, it, which is okay. That's what we wanted to give if we it to you. Get we've spent it. Okay. Yeah. So, and do we have to do any kind of accounting for that? Mm -mm. No. Um, well, let's hope you do some accounting of it. No, I mean, to back, you, back to, to you or to back the, to the. Not to the U.S. government, no. Okay. Yeah. Um, and hopefully, you are not going to take the money and buy a new car. <laughs> Is well, maybe, maybe, yeah, I'll buy a, maybe I'll buy a Corvette convertible to drive some of the folks around. That's what I'm wondering why you're asking that question. <laughs> well, because I thought, because I thought that the money had, you had to divvy out the money by a certain date. Yeah, we do, and but you are a we, recipient of the money. We're giving right. you the money. We're taking care of the accounting. Okay. So my question was, if you don't give us the full amount that we asked for, we could then put yeah. it in an account and try to fundraise to get the additional funding that we need. Exactly. That's kind of what we're, okay. one of the questions we had for you was, are you going yeah. to be able to come up? I mean, we're probably not going to give you the 50,000 bucks or whatever it is, but we may give you some money because we think it's a worthy cause. So then what's going to happen to the money that we give you? Are you going to be able to do the project? Well, Another thought we had, I mean, if you could have seen the parking lot this morning, it was a sheet of ice. And there's no way anybody in a wheelchair or a walker could safely enter. So one uh -huh. of the other options that we thought of was we could ask, we could pave, <clears throat> pave the um, handicapped parking spaces and the ramp area. So, so, that you folks, think so that the bus paving is going to help the ice problem. Well, yeah, because then they can actually we can actually put something on it to melt the ice or make the traction better. Right now, it's just big. I don't know. If you guys must have seen the center. The parking lot right now is full of like potholes and lumps and bumps. Yeah. So the anymore. ice builds up in these lumps and bumps, and even with the plow, they can't do it. We did have. Um, our plow person come in sand, which was which helped, but having a nice park parking lot that's all paved would be such a such a wonderful thing. Um, yeah. Right now, people have to park, you know, and miss potholes and big puddles of right. water. Yeah, yeah, but I I don't question the worthiness of the cause. We're just wondering if we don't give you all the money. How are you gonna get the rest of it, or are you just gonna pave half of it? It's kind of what you just said. Like if we right. say we just gave you twenty five thousand, 
you're going to just do part of it until well, you get we, the rest I of the money? The board, the, well, the board would have to discuss that, whether we do part of it or whether we want to do a special fundraising campaign, Yeah, you know, to right. help pay for the other part of the parking lot. Yeah. So those, those so, would be our options. Yeah. So the money that we give you could go into an account marked paving and right. eventually you would use it. Right. And that's right. why I asked okay. if we had to spend it by a certain time. No, you don't. You do not have to. But, okay. Yeah. I mean, everyone on the board thinks, I think, that this is a worthy use of the money. But we were just concerned that we, if we don't give you all the money, what's going to happen to it? Are you just yeah, going to well, be done? Yeah. But you've answered my question. Yeah. I mean, it, it would make it harder, obviously, for us to do it. The full parking lot. Well, well, we, excuse me, Seth. We were originally yeah. told that if if we did not give the whole fifty thousand, then the project would not be able to be con, uh, would not be able to take place. I don't yeah, know that was kind of ours. I don't yeah. know when that was said. Well, that's okay. You're. It sounds like you're coming up with a different plan. That if we don't give you the full funding, you could still use it. It might not just happen tomorrow, or you could just do half of it or something. Is that correct? Right. Right. Okay. All right. Could I just make a couple of comments about um, this paving project? Sure. Um, so most grants that we write, they're for fairly small amounts and they're basically for, you know, food. We're, we're asking money for food. It's hard to find a grant that would cover you know, $50,000 to cover the paving for our driveway. And in yeah. the last year and a half, we've tried four different times to get some monies to get this uh, project going. Um, for yeah. instance, we we um, applied to the Human Services Grant to the state of Vermont, but because they required GAP funding of that for 50% of the amount that we needed to for paving, they wouldn't give us anything because we would have to show them up front that we had the yeah. 20000 or the 25000 in our budget, which we did not have. So um, and another um, grant we tried for was the home and community-based services through the Agency of Human Services, state of Vermont. And I did work with the Council on Aging to try to get some help for this. But unfortunately, because we didn't have a specific Medicaid provider ID certification, um, they would not consider us for the application for the infrastructure improvements. And others, we, we went through the congressionally directed spending account. Um, and um, because we were outside of the US census determined area to be eligible for this funding, we were not allowed to apply. If we had been in the area closer to say um, Dudley's or the town clerk's office, we would have been in that specific US census area and we would have been able to apply and had a good chance to get funding for paving. And otherwise we've asked Bernie Sanders office also um, through the house appropriations committee and we didn't get any anywhere there. So. What I'm trying to say, it's really hard to apply for a large amount of money for this type of grant. And so that's why we were really hoping we could get something through ARPA, through the East Montpelier uh, Select Board. Okay. We are always in fundraising and grant mode, always. Yeah. All right. Anybody have any questions for Laura or Denise or... Sue. Sue. Who? Sue or Denise. Sue or Denise. Can do you have any idea when you would be able to let us know? Oh, we'll probably have another meeting or two on it. Okay. Or are, we're not making a decision tonight, I don't think. Or are we? Okay. I don't know. We're soon. Okay. Well, okay. very good. Thank you for your time. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, so there's other um, items to discuss on the use of the ARPA money. 
There's the all together now request. There's a request for the trails and there's a request for the historical society. Or was that the other place up there? Mm -hmm. You got them all. Yeah. Yep. So what is everyone? We talked about this at the last meeting um, and we didn't come up with any conclusions. Has anyone thought about this? I mean, the all together now, I think has been problematic. Carl discussed some of the problems. Um, so I'm not quite sure where we are on that. Does anybody else have any thoughts? Which did you want to talk about now? All together now. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I've raised questions, and so I've I've put my finger on on problems. Uh, but I think all together now is an East Montpelier based nonprofit, and that we can address some of the issues that the spending is actually going to be done by another organization that owns a house uh, rather than by the nonprofit, but the nonprofit is a tenant. I think that if uh, we can get them to show, um, Janice to show that she's extended the long-term lease for all together now in the house by 10 years, which she said at the previous meeting that she's agreeable to do, that um, we can uh, we can and, and just looking at the commitment of everybody living in the area and having part ownership of of the house uh, to the work that all together now does, um, I'm comfortable devoting some portion of the funds to giving to all together now. So so was it clear, Carl, that they would be able to open the preschool again, or is this? Just on the housing, they're just working so with the, housing. So the preschool now. takes place in the in the farmhouse. So I know, but I'm not sure that's going to be back back in business. Were you were you clear on that? Um, I I thought that they were working to remedy all the issues that the fire uh, state fire inspector brought to them with the idea that they could go back into business, but maybe. I didn't specifically ask that. Uh -huh. I mean, I've heard them talking, but it sounded like they were just talking about the affordable housing aspect of the building. And I didn't hear anything about preschool. So that was a question I had. We could, um, we could ask for clarification of that. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. The preschool is one one big reason to support it. And right. uh, we had at least one member of the community come in and testify about how important it, it was for her to yeah. become educated as a nurse so that she could yeah. now serve residents as a nurse. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else have any questions or thoughts about all together now? There, there's still some, some ambiguity on, you know, where, you know, and and documentation that we, as Carl had just mentioned, that I think that we would need um, to at least seriously consider this. Also, the ownership of the building it seems. I know there, there's you know, ambiguous. It, it, we have some that, fiduciary responsibility. Town's money, yeah, it's it's not clear cut yes. by any means. I think we're uncomfortable with some of the aspects of this. Yep. As I, uh, okay. So the other two requests, one is the trails. Anybody have any thoughts on that? No, no pretty the trails they're, sound to me like a, not a bad organization. Yeah. They're a good investment. Yep. No, I think the parking lot is serves more people. Just put that out there. Fours serves an awful lot of people from a lower income bracket than the side than the trails do. But I'm saying the trails is a good it's a good project. I don't and know. Then, As someone who has one of the trails go across his land, I, I see a fair number of people out there. Oh, I'm not saying I, you don't. I, I can't no, I, I can't tell you what their income is. Well, um, well, I don't want to go into that. Yeah. So, 
what about the now was it the historical society i didn't believe it was display cabinets and I think stage sand, sand, uh, sandals online she's What's on that? zoom sandal is on zoom probably wants to want to address this okay. sandal Kate. yeah i see her hi seth hi carl hi hi hello uh, and my town office. Anyway, <laughs> no, I think I'm hoping that my proposal is really clear. I tried to be as specific as I could be. Um, the 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 bigger picture is for the benefit of the town in general because the only place we've ever had um, a spot to display is at the entrance to the town office, and that's certainly not open on weekends. And so we'd like to. Um, work in conjunction with Four Corners after they get their mold uh, their mold issues re remediated. I met with them twice and they're perfectly happy to um, have us set, um, get something built there um, that can store stuff and exhibit stuff. Um, it might take a little pressure off of the storage issues right there at the town office, um, but we wouldn't move out everything that we have in storage in the town office vault area. Um, it's pretty safe and it's pretty well documented there. But the idea is to have um, some display space so that if on weekends we want to be hosting uh, any kind, any number of events, and we've got some things as maybe um, Rosie has pointed out um, in terms of the town's, what, 175th anniversary, which is like right about this year <laughs> or and, and next year. And um, the Vermont, um, you know, the, the um, declaration of Vermont becoming a state also being celebrated, I think within the next two years. So we just don't have a space to welcome people on weekends. And if we had, a, had display materials and display, you know, lockable display cases, um, at Four Corners, then we can go back to doing things there. Okay. Any questions for Sandal, anybody? Uh, we had some discussion in the absence of the Historical Society at our previous meeting about um, the connection between the Four Corners Schoolhouse Association and the Historical Society with a background that we have just, uh, we have already allocated $30,000 from the ARPA funds for the uh, the schoolhouse association for improvements there. I'm wondering if you could speak to that, Sandal. Um, yes, uh, his <laughs> over the years we have as an as the historical site has paid small amounts of rent anytime we wanted to meet there, um, and we share a mailbox together, <laughs> so our <laughs> our treasures get along well with each other. Um, we have separate. Um, uh, treasury accounts. Um, and again, we've oftentimes met there, um, particularly before COVID. And now with the with the mold issues, they're not having groups meet there now. So we would A, resume meeting there from time to time, and B, set up these displays and, and, and have more um, open house type events on weekends for any number of you know, visitors to come. So the displays that you have at the town office right now, those are not connected with the Four Quarters Schoolhouse Association at all. Is that correct. correct? No, not no. It's just something that Rosie has encouraged us to do. Um and we don't do a, a lot there, but we have right now we have our our saleable materials um set up there. So it sounds and, like and it really would be it ahead. really would be double dipping for the schoolhouse association to have some replacement for the displays that you already have in the town office just because they happen to be located in the schoolhouse which is as you say open you can have open on weekends um i don't quite get your point well that, the point i made it last time is they've already putting money into that building we Correct. have donated thirty thousand dollars of arpa money into the Four Corners Schoolhouse. I felt that now we're giving more money in the same building, which I think I'm still correct on, 
you want display cabinets within that building that are part of that building. Uh, correct. Although, right. again, historically, we have done a lot there, and we our group has been, you yep. know, somewhat dependent on having that mm -hmm. building available. Right now, yep. we hold our East Montpelier meetings in the old brick church, but we certainly can't leave any of our materials there yep. for display or viewing, right? What have you? And um, yeah, and the only other thing we we've, we've used the four corners as a place to keep our computer projector safe there. Um, that, so we've we've worked hand in hand with them in a number yep. of ways, but. But th right yep. now, their their critical need is to remediate the building, and yes. are more, you know, to kind of get us settled in someplace in town. We don't own a building. A lot of community, a lot of communities that have historical sites have either a room in their library, maybe a room in their own town office, maybe um, a room in an old schoolhouse, or they own a whole building. But East Montpelier yep. Historical has has never owned. A facility space and this would at least make us feel like we've got a little corner of town someplace yeah so i have a question then just kind of a thought experiment for you seth um it, would we see this as somehow more valuable to the town more worthy of funding if the new display cases were to end up in the old brick church or the elementary school or some other location than the Four Corners Schoolhouse? The, my, my point of view on the use of the ARPA funds is how many people is it going to benefit? And that's basically the bottom line for me. It's like if we give $50,000 out, how many people are going to be benefited from that? Is it going to be a narrow segment of the population or is it going to be a huge swath of the population? That's so, my Seth, point of view. Yeah. So Seth, um, I yeah. appreciate that point. Um, yeah. Again, the historical society, since COVID, we've really had to kind of pull in our wings a bit. We had to do a lot on Zoom, like a lot of people did, um, fewer gatherings. We still have places for gatherings. That's not so much an issue, but Four Corners would be, would be um, you know, once they're fixed up, we would use that space more. Um, and again, we don't have places where we can invite the public to come to. Um, yeah. The elementary school is really much more careful about, I think to some degree other than sports, about public ventures. Um, you know, we can have town meeting there, that type of thing. Um, but we couldn't do things easily there on the weekend. And we certainly can't do things in the town office. And we can't do a group, much of a group, anything at the town office. So it doesn't really behoove us to do much more than um, appreciate the courtesy of the town office, letting us display the town history books and the town publications there. Um, we we really need a kind of a little corner where we have our nice things. Right now, that I know there's actually some boxes up at the historical at the uh, four corners of historical artifacts, but we have no place to put them out. And people do write us and contact me saying, "Oh, I've got my grandmother's this, and I've got my grandfather's that, and uh, we just ran across this or that." historically and there's just no way to get them out there um and probably maybe seth you've seen the where the vault is in the town office and there's a lot of amazing stuff in there but we have yeah. really very limited time a very limited space to put it anywhere and and mm -hmm. it's not someplace where people can see it unless they occasionally you know come by the town office and they just happen to see it so there's no yes. place for us to exhibit our town history. And that's, uh, we would need a lockable, decent, appealing cabinetry. That's what the basis of the request is. And then we have the clearance with the, with the Four Corners to have, you know, ongoing 
visit, you know, reasons to come there and exhibits and activities. And again, Ro Rosie's kind of encouraging us to um, do more uh, to celebrate upcoming anniversaries, both for the town and the state. Okay, so um, I think we still need to um, clear up a few things with all together now before we make a final decision on this use of ARPA money. So I'm going to ask the town administrator to put it on our next agenda, and we've got to get it done by then. And yeah, there's only three of us. Exactly. That's my point. Zoe, right Zoe's now. not here. Right. Yeah, there's three of us. But John's resigned, so there's only going to be four of us. So but Zoe's not here. And I'd rather make it as full of board as possible. And in I concur. I concur. So, so. Yeah. Okay. So. I'd say we move on. I got a sump pump running in my cellar right now. I don't want it to burn out. <laughs> Water <laughs> running everywhere. <laughs> so anyway, so then we're gonna we've heard a lot about the ARPA use of ARPA funds tonight. I think we're all starting to settle our minds on what we should do with it, and we'll make a, a final decision next meeting. Um, so the next item on the agenda is discussion and consideration of resident request to discontinue town right away. Is is a resident here? Well, no, this is a continuation of the uh, Ed Deegan yeah. request. Right. So as requested at the November 20th, I think, select board meeting, yep. I had the town attorney um, get a list of all the persons um, owning or interested in lands through which the highway may pass or abut. So essentially the abutting uh, landowners. Yep. So I have that information from the town attorney. So I'm yep. presenting that to the select board. Now it's a question of what the select board next steps. What's I also the next included step? the email from the town attorney on what all we need to do for this request. What's the next step? Well, we would end up having to post and you'll have to schedule a time to examine the premises. Okay. I don't know if winter's a good time to do that or not. Um, right now, the ground's pretty bare, but... Well, we have to give 30 days notice yeah. of the site visit. So there's a whole litany yeah. of yeah. things that we need to do. So yeah, I guess another question is, where is this on the priority list for the select board to jump on now? Or where do you want to go with this? Um, so if you give the 30-day notice now that's not a very good time of year to be walking around up there yeah and we have to notice a number of different no, there's only five organizations. people no One, two, three. we have to notice the planning commission we have to know oh, right. commissioner of forest parks and recreation yeah why don't we just wait until after we get done the budget in the town report thing and then we'll put it on our because february is kind of a dead month mm -hmm. so why don't we just put it off till then okay so we can get through all the other important stuff that we have to. Not that this yeah. isn't important, but it's just it's going to tie us up, and mm -hmm. we don't need to be tied up right now. That's fine with me. Is that good enough? Yeah, but at least we have the list now from the town. Yeah, yeah. And then we can execute from there. Right. If the select board agrees to do so. Yep. Okay. So we can get rid of that. And the next item is update on East Montpelier Fire Department quarterly meeting. Discussion on East Montpelier Fire Department 2025 capital request and budget. So most of us went to the meeting. They're asking for some increases. Um, I have some thoughts on that, but uh, I don't know what everyone else thought. I see Scott, you weren't there, right? No, I, I didn't. I. But Carl was there. I was there. Yeah, I, had another, I had another board meeting. Yeah. 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 Do you have any thoughts? I had, um, well, as you heard, I had some questions about the uh, the magnitude of the increases and was somewhat mollified when uh, I learned that they were not as high as I uh, had originally believed uh, from my glance at the, the tables that they presented us. Uh, but yeah, they, they continue to go up significantly above the rate of inflation each year. Yeah. And they're reflecting um, problems that they have in getting people to volunteer, adding more people to the payroll. 
and um, and health insurance costs increasing and and other things. Um, they presented it as a budget that um, really they couldn't figure out how to cut anymore without cutting mm -hmm. to the bone. Mm -hmm. and so, yes, I have concerns, and no, I don't immediately have any suggestions for ways to reduce the increases. So I'm concerned about the double digit increases that they've had for years, keeps going up. I understand where they're at, but I'll, I wanna give you just a slight bit of history. When they sold that to the town, the ambulance revenue was gonna fund everything. It was gonna co cost the town nothing. And then when they got it passed, they said, oh, just kidding, the ambulance revenue is not, we can't use that for our operating expenses. So we did manage to get them to do some of the uh, expenses out of the ambulance revenue. And we got them to take the $15,000 of ambulance revenue and put that back into the budget. Well, they're moving away from that now as they took out all the expenses that they were taking out of the ambulance and they've moved that into their general budget. Now all the ambulance revenue, almost all of it, is going into the capital capital budget because they say equipment costs more money, which is, is true, it does. So there are some ways around that, but it wouldn't be a I don't know if it would be a popular way for us to move forward. But if we contracted our ambulance services out to Barry Town and they use this building as their one of their substations which is what Williamstown is doing right now. Um, it's probably a cheaper way for us to operate an ambulance service. The, the argument against that from their point of view is that that money would not be coming in for them to buy equipment with. Um, my argument with the equipment, even though I realize they do need equipment and they need the new engine, is that if they don't have the money to spend on equipment like new trucks they would have to bring that to the town voters and in some ways that's an appropriate way to handle the requests their capital requests is through the town through the voters it would cost the town more money on that side of things but they wouldn't buy as much stuff so the ambulance service if you contracted it out is done on a per um per unit basis on population. And uh, Bruce and I looked into that, or Bruce looked into that, and it was a significant savings and it does stabilize the cost of ambulance service quite a lot. So those, those are just some ways that you can change the dynamics of the whole um, organization, but I don't know how popular that's gonna be. So in the future, if you're concerned about double digit increases, and you want to stop that, then you have to look at alternate ways to provide ambulance service to the town residents, which is going back to what they had before, but they completely changed their model as we've gone forward. And it gets more and more expensive, more and more staff. Pretty soon it'll be paid staffing instead of per diem. That's even more money. So I'm just, I'm just saying there's a lot of red flags going on here for expense. Is yes, that? Scott. Um, yeah. This is what you're proposing as a potential alternative or um, or action is something that would be addressed or considered for the next budget, obviously, because yeah, I would imagine, it would have I would imagine we, we, that we, we should yes. investigate. Yeah, because it's I, we need to I have, we need to have hearings. We should. And that kind of stuff. we should look into it in the in the future. I'm not saying okay. at this moment we've got a lot to yeah, do. It's, it's a late. project. It's a big project to take on, but right. you know, it's something, I mean, Callis is concerned about the increases also. Sure. Um, yep. So what's that? Yeah, you, you, you've made that, you know, really apparent since I've been on the board, since I've been on the select board. And I think it's something that we should talk about after, you know, going forward over, you know, be, before we get really serious about the budget, you know, the 26 budget. I do too. No, I think we owe it to, we owe it to the taxpayers to look into Absolutely. alternatives. Yeah, I appreciate you bringing that. I appreciate you bringing that up. It makes a lot of sense for an yeah. investigation. 
Okay. Uh, anybody else have any comments on that? Well, I'll just throw okay. in in terms of the timing that you know we had some discussion at the meeting about revising the interlocal agreement with Callis and the fire department to yeah. go back to the way it was a few years ago um, be, and so that it would automatically renew. But in any case, um, you know, there are certain time frames within that agreement for um, registering a wish to withdraw from the agreement that we need to think about in terms of That's right. moving forward in the future. But no, that, 90 day, that 90 day notice is June, July, August, starts yeah. June 1st around that. So if we want to have a discussion about not renewing, then we need to have that discussion in the spring mm. after town meeting. Mm. And that's sometimes when we have some time to explore alternatives. And then if we thought, well, you know, this looks like a good idea, then you could give the notice at the appropriate time. So we should keep it on our radar. Okay. Anybody else? Anything to say? Okay. Um, that's it. Do okay. we have? Do, I, I think. I know on the agenda was also the. Um, yeah, we've got warrants. Uh, yeah, warrants, and there was also just the uh, Central Vermont Planning Commission. That's just a letter for recruitment. That's all. That's just FYI. We're looking for a representative. Yeah, Is that I have that, that in my. Uh, oh, that's in the select board memo. Yeah, I have that Not on okay. the agenda. Okay. Yeah, when I get to that part. But we're ready for your town administrator report in the warrants, but it looks like the warrants, I'm going to have to sign them. Yeah, so they we would need a motion. Yeah, to from, have me sign them. Correct. I move to authorize the chair to sign the warrants for tonight. I'll second that. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 I didn't ask for further discussion. Sorry about that, Scott. Um, okay, so I can do the time. warrants. And then Gina, you can give your report. Yeah, so uh, the proposals uh, that were in response to the RFP for the town garage project all came in on Friday uh, by 4 p.m. And we did receive four uh, proposals from four different firms. So uh, I think, I'm not sure if John's going to be attending that or not, but they're meeting like Wednesday night. I don't uh, think so. He's leaving on Wednesday. For you, Andy. Kathleen, I yeah, I'll be here to, uh, to go over those proposals. Yeah, so stay tuned for that. Um, so yeah, the town right now we don't really have representation with Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission. Um, we used to have a, a town representative with CVRPC, and also we had someone on the they call it the TAC uh, committee, but the Transportation Advisory Committee. So both of those positions are vacant. So. Uh, regional planning gave me an information sheet um, about the position. So I was planning to put this as its own post on Front Porch Forum to just hone in. We posted this position in the past, um, but we've kind of done it because we had a number of positions open. Um, so I was planning to put this on the website. Um, also, I've already sent this to the planning commission, um, to the chair of the planning commission. So Hopefully we can kind of cascade this, but want the select board to know that if there's anyone that you know of, um, please, you know, let them know we do have a need here. Yeah. Uh, we have a lot of needs. Yeah, we do. I know. It's tough and we're not alone in the difficulty in recruiting volunteers for these, type, these types of positions these days. Any meeting I attend with, like it, for VLCT with town fair, where there's other select board members or other town administrators, or you name it, it's it's a common challenge across many towns. Uh, there have been no permit applications since the last meeting, so no update there. I uh, just wanted to let the select board know that uh, the town attorney, Jim Barlow, will be out of the office until January, through January 8th. Um, he did provide an emergency phone number, so if we have an emergency, um, I can get a hold of him. And just a way heads up advance notice that um, I will be out of the office for two weeks uh, from July 22nd through August 3rd. Um, that's in between select board meetings um, on purpose. Uh, but I will be working some during that time because I will have to prepare for the select board meeting. Um, that will be the Monday um, when I get back. Uh, so I just wanted to give you guys a heads up on that. And then Thank I have you for the long distance heads up. 
Huh? Yes. It's Thank a you very for long the long lead time. Well, I'm not usually that busy anyway. Huh? So I thought usually that busy, but yeah, you know, yeah. If it doesn't rain, have, 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 have a have a great have a great vacation ahead uh -huh. of time. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. So. yeah. And you have your future meeting schedule, and that's it. Thank you. Congratulations on a record time for this meeting. This is usually a very long meeting, so last year yeah. it was very long. Can I yeah. hello hello? Before you wrap it up, can I just ask a question? I was unable to unmute before because I've been having trouble with my Zoom here, but. This Deb yeah. again, um, especially because you just said that the attorney is going to be unavailable. The attorney should fix his table there of the owners of those parcels. That parcel ID 10025.2, that's the 3.27 acres that you bought, Seth, isn't it? How much is it? How many acres? 3.27. No, I bought five point something acres. 5.75? Yeah, I think so. Where's the where's the map? No map. Uh, yeah. This is his memo. Okay. Anyway, <clears throat> we should just get that straight because he, he he's saying he's, he's looking at the CAI web map on the town's website, and when I saw that, I thought, well, wait a minute, that's only through April, twenty twenty three. When did you buy the Clark piece? Was that that was after April first, right? Yeah, not much after. Yeah. But. So that so. Right, so we should just make sure that the one he's got listed here still belongs to Wayne Clark is, and isn't the one that you bought because he bought it after April 1st, so it wouldn't be on the CAI web map yet. Well, he reviewed the land records as well as part of this. So I think, Deb, if you have a concern about what he did, if you could send me an email with that, then I will send that to yeah, him. Yeah, he did not right distribute now, so. CAI maps to do this. He reviewed the yeah. land records. All right, well, I, I'm not in the office right now, so. Obviously, I can check and make sure that I know what I'm... one of those two Clark parcels is one that's three, three and something acres and one that's five and something acres. I think into here. No, see. I bought the five point something acres. Okay. And I think this one then is the 3.27. So that still belongs to Clark, in other words. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, that's, that, that could be true then. I wasn't sure. I couldn't tell because I'm not at work. Okay. okay. Yeah. If any questions, just email me. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. All right. We're done. I've got other business. Yeah. This, this will probably this will take less than an hour and a half, so don't worry. Um, oh, you, you want other you, business that we have to talk about? Oh, trust me, yeah. you won't. You, trust me, you won't have a quorum with that. The, uh, yeah. Yeah. The the issue is uh, the minutes and my. Uh, ongoing effort to get fired as, as minutes taker. Uh, Seth and Gina and I have discussed uh, put me putting together just really short minutes. I don't want this to land on Gina's desk. Uh, no, it's and, not going to land on G Gina's desk. Let's and put that way. and uh, you know, I want I want us to um, to stay clean in terms of uh, getting our minutes posted in time. It's occurred to me that uh, there is no requirement in the state statute that uh, the draft minutes posted be the same draft minutes from the moment they're posted until the moment that they are approved. So I talked this over with, with Gina today and um, I wanna bring it to you guys. What I'm thinking that I'll do going forward is post draft minutes that are very short and conduct and cover everything that's legally re required, but I can get them out quickly. And then sometime probably within a week of the, the meeting, but not within five calendar days necessarily, post the, the more detailed minutes that we have become accustomed to. And but we don't have to have people. more detailed minutes. We don't have to have more detailed minutes. Legally, we you're correct, have... and uh, and I have always spoken in favor of the more detailed minutes as being more friendly to historians, to townspeople who don't make it to the meeting, want to find out what happened here, and and anybody who doesn't want to go through the video. Well, you're 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 putting yourself out there to for a lot of work. Now, what yes, I'm saying, I'm, I'm aware of that. If we and have I would like to, to go to a default position, which is somebody else doing the minutes. They are not going to be detailed minutes. They are going to be statutorily, the minutes that are required statutorily, and that's it. 
because we're we're going to have to operate in emergency mode, which means we have nobody to take the minutes, and Gina is not going to do it. So we'll have uh, to draw in somebody. I don't think you're community. understanding me, Seth. Yeah, I am understanding you. I'm saying make the minutes short and what they meet to set. If you want to do more detailed minutes afterward, that's up to you. But I'm saying yeah. that the default position we may have to go to yeah. is the statutorily required minutes. Well, I think he's coming up with a middle yeah. ground. I understand. So I'm going, yeah. I, I'm saying, okay, if you want to do that, if you want to lay that on yourself, that's up to you. Yes. Yes. I, 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 I think Carl, your, your suggestion makes a tremendous amount of se sense. Then I'm, I'm curious on what those, those abbreviated minutes look like, but I think for the historical records of the town, I'm in agreement that you know some detail is is you know is necessary and valuable going going forward. The statutorily required minutes certainly are good enough, but whatever, it's okay. That's what position you want to be in. That's okay. I would like to say, as an auditor, one of the things they tell us in the auditor's handbook is to read the select board minutes and look for anything that has you know any monetary decisions being made or whatever. But the more detailed they are, the easier it is for us to follow what the heck's going on. And these um, uh, annotated agendas that Gina's putting together have a lot of the background information you can almost just pick up and dump into the minutes or attach the annotated agenda to the minutes as an alternative if you're gonna do really pared down minutes because there's a lot of information there that helps that's good, that's with the auditing. Point. Yep, that's something, sure that's, that's something that we decided to do. <clears throat> yep, that's something that we decided to do a while ago. Uh, we're, we're thinking okay. along the same lines. Okay. Sounds good. Would you like a um, Would you like a motion, Seth? No, we don't need a motion, do we? Oh, for say. the for 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 the next for the next agenda item. Oh, motion to adjourn. I just wanted to make sure we discuss the minutes. Yeah. Fully. No. 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 And is yeah, Carl no, satisfied with that discussion? I'm satisfied. Okay. I am too. So no, thank you. Thank you, Carl. That that's a that's a good solution for right now. Yeah, thank you. We'll see how it works. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sure. We could have the next item. I would like Go to ahead. make a motion to um to dismiss us. Motion to adjourn. <laughs> adjourn. Okay. Uh, second. Oh you second it? Yeah. So may I favor, please say aye. Uh, this is a gentleman. I, may I ask a question? I was negligent. I was watching television and I forgot to tune in for the results of your consideration of the money for the various organizations. Can you tell me next, what next you meeting? Next meeting. Oh, next meeting. Yeah, we have some questions about one of the requests. We want to clear those up before we make a final decision. I didn't miss yeah, anything. No. no, you didn't miss anything. You missed a robust discussion and a lot of blah blah, but and we got through it. But nothing's okay. been decided, but it will be decided next time. Okay, when will that be? Okay. Do we know? The next meeting is January eighth. Mm -hmm. Next meeting Great. is January eighth. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Okay. The the uh, request for adjournments on the floor. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes have they do have. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank, Thank you, you for tuning in. Thank you all. Be safe. Bye.